business owners out there who want to learn how to know if you underbid a project, this just happened to me today. So I'm taking a look at this guy's yard. He's looking for a weekly mow with a bi-weekly edging, pretty basic stuff. I take a walk around and I'm looking at it. I say, okay, uh, it'll be, you know, 180 a month. And here's how he reacted. He goes, oh, okay, yeah, that sounds pretty good. That facial reaction right there told me I left money on the table. You could tell he was a little bit surprised to hear it that low. Which I didn't really think was honestly that low, but apparently he did. So I left some money on the table. Pay attention to how your customers respond after you give them a quote. And after that happened, I'm just like, man, damn it, that sucks. I only honestly think I left about five bucks a week, so about 20 bucks a month on the table. So I really don't think it was all that bad. But still left some money on the table. But it's just interesting how you can, you know, you pay attention to these little things like that and you can start to pick up on that. It's like, whoa, he, he his facial expression showed me that, you know, maybe uh, another thing is, too, is if your customer uh, accepts it too fast. If, you know, you got a potential client that you're working with and, and the price uh, gets accepted too fast. Um, I always like it when they tell me, you know, hey, I got to go think about it or, you know, I got to go talk this over with the wife. I'm like good think about it that means i'm there you know i'm not oh crap bro you're cheap bro. come here do the work you know nah -uh. yeah please go think about it gladly have you go think about it and then there's another instance too that happens you know let's say you know i'm checking out this yard right so i'm walking the property and i'm like eh, i'm stuck between you know just to give the example and this is what happened to me earlier today was i was stuck between 180 a month and 200 a month okay um and one thing that i've always found and even so i've figured this out but i still do it okay i still make the same mistake over and over and over and over and over again except i just do it less now like i don't make the mistake as much but i still make this mistake so when you're walking the property or whatever you're walking the job and you get two prices in your head you're like ah, oh, 180 eh, maybe 200 go with the higher one every time and i didn't this time and i got burned okay I didn't get burned. I like, it's not like we're going to, you know, it's still next year. I could totally change the quote on this person. But anyways, just long story short, if you're stuck between two prices, go with the top one. Because, you know, when you're dealing with that inner demon that says, you're ripping these people off. You charge them too much. Yeah. And when you're dealing with that guy, right, uh, you're always going to try to talk yourself down on your price in your head before it even comes out of your mouth. The customer's not even doing anything, bro. They're just sitting there, standing there, watching you. They're just... And as you're walking the property, these thoughts are going through your head, and you're just like, uh, I'm going to charge them too much. No, I don't want to charge them too much. I have to get to work. We just lost one client the other day due to whatever reason, and and, and work slowing, and this, and that, and yeah, okay always go with the higher one if i would have came out and said 200 hopefully i would have got a different reaction i would have got maybe hopefully that's what he was expecting uh but anyways i just wanted to bring that up you know we could talk about pricing services forever